It's been a couple months, but we finally get to find out what happened to... Which is this blue Kenworth that came in with this complaint. Whoa. He might be okay. So we're gonna be pulling the pan here and finding out exactly what happened and mostly finding out what the heck this thing is. Now, if you see this in your oil pan, folks, and think it's okay. Well, no, probably not now. Hey guys, Josh with the Deptic Channel. So, knock it off, the blue Kenworth. Finally got approved to find out what's wrong with it. So, we're gonna pull in the oil pan. Think you guess what's wrong with it? I don't know what's wrong with it yet, so I guess we'll find out. So, first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is drain the oil out. Now these are cat oil pans in general. The C13, C15s have an inch and a half drain plug size and I usually use my Milwaukee half inch impact to zip them off. Trying to go here at the lowest point in the pan I can get it. Gonna be using our incredible Hulk dish gloves here. Keep oil off our hands. And they're gonna be draining the oil. Now we are gonna pull an oil sample. We had pulled one a couple months ago when the truck was here, but somewhere between it getting shipped out of our facility on the way to the lab, it was lost. So we're gonna be pulling another one. Not really sure it's gonna need it though, because, well, you'll see later. So pulling an oil pan is pretty straightforward. On an SDP C15 like this though, you've got a couple extra things. So you've got this blow by drain tube. You've got the old, nozzle heater dryer for the ARD head and I really need to put a cap on that oil filter cap and then we've got our spark coil might be saying spark coil isn't this a diesel engine well yes but the art head has a spark plug if you don't know that you might want to check out my regen video so once all that's off start taking the bolts out generally I go from front to back and then work my way to the center leaving two bolts in the center and the bolts, I believe there's 36 on these C15 pans. Could be wrong though. So they take a spacer and they're fairly expensive. So what it is, you can see it kind of hanging out there in the pan. It's a little grommet with an insert and that is there to help keep the bolt from bottom, bottoming out directly against the pan and breaking the pan. So you definitely do not want to put the bolts in without these little guys and these are pretty expensive i think they're like four or five dollars each so now we are getting to the fun part so i've got all the bolts out except for two they're generally i leave the center two and one on each side so i'm going to pull one side and you can see it pop down i'm going to support it you don't want it hanging off one bolt on one side it could damage the pan or snap that ear off and then it's junk and these pans are very expensive they're over a thousand dollars so just taking our last bolt here, and we're gonna slide this pan out. Now you might be wondering, hey, why didn't you pressure wash this or something? I was not gonna start this engine to move it over to the pressure wash bay. It's It got pushed in with a forklift, and it's not gonna get moved, so. Let's see, oop. Something came out, I could tell right away. Now from this vantage point, I could not see what fell here where I was at, but luckily I recorded it. You can see that right there, and that is a main bolt, which you could probably tell from the uh, picture early in the video or the post I did yesterday. So just looking for any damage. And yeah, I could tell that there was some parts that are not supposed to be there. Now generally I've found zip ties, maybe a couple little 3 8 bolts. You don't usually find main bolts in the oil pan, though, especially ones where the heads are snapped off. So that is pretty interesting. So we're gonna pull this pan out and take a better look at what destruction we have. And this video is basically gonna be a destruction of the week, so we're not gonna have an actual destruction of the week segment. So here's what we got. We've got what it looks like one main bolt stud now. The heads are broken off. Whole bunch of metal towards the rear there. Got the washers for the main bolts. Don't see the other uh, bolt. Well, it'd be a stud now because the head snapped off. So we've got two big washers, two bolt heads, and one bolt or stud in the pan, which means there's another bolt somewhere. Oh, you can see the missing one there. That's number five main cap. We'll get under this dirty axle, take a look. So just looking for the other broken one. That's a little, it's tight quarters under here. So that is, you can see the missing one there. Oh, there's the other one. 
So number six, you can see right there with the stamping. So number six, it couldn't have fallen out because it's hitting this ladder plate, also known as a block stiffener or block strengthener plate. So it literally can't come out until I remove that plate, but yeah, head's broken off and it's loose. So is it probably the head came loose first or the bolt just came loose? Well, we'll find out by the end, but the head snapped off first. So we're looking for what caused that, because that's something, something caused that, and this is what caused it. See it right there, although the piston is toward top dead center, you can see the crank is cracked right there. Pretty major. So that's what I was guessing all along was that the crank was broken somewhere because that noise while cranking was pretty horrible. So I pulled five, six, and seven main caps off, which are the rear three. And five and six, the mains actually look decent. Number seven, though, was partially spun and I couldn't get the lower bearing out. So what we're doing here is just rotating the crankshaft around and trying to see how bad that crack in the crank is. And as you can see, it's pretty bad. Crank is completely cracked in half. So that is no bueno. That crank is gonna have to be replaced. Um, gonna need to pull this engine out because the front and rear structures are gonna have to come off. We're gonna take a closer look at the damage here and also the bearings in more detail, but before we do that, I'm gonna talk about this week's sponsor, which is DexFit Gloves, the most comfortable cut-resistant gloves on the market. It's not easy to have the highest rating and best-selling gloves on Amazon, but they've done it. Now, if you're someone that works with your hands, you definitely want comfortable gloves, because if they're not comfortable, you're not gonna wear them, and these are definitely comfortable gloves. Now the reason they're called DexFit is because they're amazing dexterity. Allows you to pick up small objects, almost like you're not even wearing gloves at all. Now the fronts are nitro coated, allowing them to easily resist grease, oil, and dirt, and keep it off the face of your hand. The backs, however, are not nitro coated, which allows them to be light and breathable, resulting in non-sweaty hands by the end of the day. Doesn't matter if you're doing something small like checking tire air pressure or something more strenuous like pulling lug nuts, these gloves will do the job. So it doesn't matter whether it's red or yellow, black or white, DexFit gloves will get the job done right. So from this vantage point, you can see that the crank is totally in two pieces now. Now this is called the crank arm or the webbing or web between the main and the rod on number six connecting rod. So we've got number six main, to number six cylinder connecting rod. That's where it's split. So anyone trying to guess where it was broken, that's where it was. And we're gonna rotate the crank here. So really the only thing holding this part, this rear section of the crank in, look at that, it's like a jaw moving, is the connecting rod bolted to the piston and then the flywheel going through the rear structure. If you unbolted it and took the rod cap off, this part of the crank would actually just fall out. So that would be bad. So what? most likely happened is crank broke snapped right there that put undue forces on the mains which caused number seven to spin and caused five and six main cap bolts to snap off you can see the five and six main bearings are actually not horrible but seven of course was spun it only spun looks like it once because part of the tab is still on the lower section top section though is more messed up but that's not good so the forces put on those bolts to snap them off must be almost unimaginable because those bolts are humongous and they torque to unbelievable amounts of torque. They are huge bolts and they're fine thread. They do not break easily. Something, well, we know what it was. The crankshaft put so much force on, they actually sheared off. And you kind of tell, looks like they sheared from not a exact downward load, but kind of uh, diagonal loading. So I'm no genius on the failure analysis, but that's what it looks like. So what would cause this? It's hard to say. So I went into the ECM download just to see if it had been messed with. Here's what we're looking at. Anyone's looked at downloads and that was kind of what I'm looking for here. So the last tool to change customer parameters and system parameters are both hacked tools. Cat records these tool numbers and those are hacked. What does that mean? Does that mean this thing's turned up to 800 horsepower? No, not necessarily. It does mean these are unregistered ET user tools, so we don't really know what's been done to it. The 
Regen system is intact. The FLS and FTS have been changed. These are incorrect. Would that cause the crankshaft to break though? I don't think so. You shouldn't be messing with these, but from what I can tell, it's got a factory horsepower rating. I believe the crankshaft just broke and caused the other damage. It does have 850,000 miles on it. So let's get to a post I did yesterday about this video. So Western States Cat was giving away three cups to people that could guess, the first three people that could guess what was wrong with the engine. And we had over, well over 100 people comment and say what it was. So here are the winners. Wrench 78, he got the closest. No one guessed it exactly. Broken crank between six rod and seven main. Man, he was so close. If he would have said six main and six rod, he would have got it dead on. But he wins a cup. Please email me at adeptapiahoo.com wrench. We have Cole Hofer, or Hoffer. Broken bolt, number five main cap. That was true. Broken crankshaft and number five journal. It was number six, but he's pretty close. Like I said, no one got it exactly. So he was the second closest. So he wins a cup. Please email me at adeptapiahoo.com. And the last one is kind of two. So Giovanni Jackson says he lives in Jamaica. So the cups can only be, sh well, we're only shipping them inside the U.S. Um, but if he has a U.S. address, we can ship you one, Giovanni. Just email me. But he got pretty close. He also said it's going to have a spun main bearing and broken uh, bolts. He got the bolts close to four, five, and six. It was actually five and six. Uh, we're also going to give one away to Hell's Canyon Diesel because he also got that it was a broken crankshaft. And he's an Idaho guy. He's actually emailed me before. So please email me also. We'll get you a cup shipped out. So there were three honorable mentions also. Dylan, Rav, and Brandon. You guys got super close, but you didn't quite win the cups. But you do get the Adept Ape Seal of Awesomeness from me. Uh, really good guesses. Lots of good guesses. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.